Are you an oxygen patient who wants to keep going? To the golf course. To take my granddaughter to the park. Shopping with friends. Keep going with the OxyGo Portable Oxygen Concentrator. Why give up the things you love to do or worry about running out of oxygen? Welcome to Episode 6 of Acting for Film and TV, brought to you by Lee WTV. I'm your host, Ed Schultz. And today we're talking about auditioning 101. But first, before we get to auditioning, I just want to uh, give you some more resources. We were talking in our previous episode about where to find work. And there are two very important online resources that I wanted to let you know about. One of them is backstage.com. And the other is actorsaccess.com. Now, both of these websites, you would register, you would set up a profile with all of your information and letting them know where you're interested in looking for work, what state, what states, uh, what areas. Now, both of these have a fee connected with them. I believe in Backstage, you join, uh, you, can, you can pay monthly or you can pay or you can join for a monthly membership, or you can just pay for one year. I think it's about a hundred dollars, something like that. And the other is Actors Access, which is used by a lot of casting directors. They might say, we want you to register for this or uh, submit your request for an audition using Actors Access. That one, I don't think there's an initial fee for the account, but each time you apply, I think there's a charge of like, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, something like that. But it's not, uh, it's not very expensive. And both of these are excellent resources. I've had a lot of work through both of them. And I would highly recommend that you get into these too. Now there are others online. Some of them have to do with, with being closer to your particular area. There are a lot in New York and there are a lot in California. The first subject that I'd like to address is casting notices. Now, whether you see a casting notice on Facebook or Facebook group or whether it's on Backstage or Actors Access, there's certainly information that you should get initially. One is the name of the production, the title. Usually there's some kind of synopsis that gives you a basic idea as to what the story is about. And then there's a short breakdown of the characters that they're looking for. And it may say, for example, John Smith father, age 50 to 70, and it may give you certain other qualifications. It may say Caucasian, it may say African American, it may say Asian, Hispanic, some kind of description like that. Then it might tell you a little bit about the character. He's a gruff old man who has no use for anybody and likes to keep to himself. That's it. Then there should be information in there, some basic information at first about the time frame that you're talking about in terms of the production itself. Shooting in June in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, it may give you specific dates, then again it may not. It also generally will give you the name of uh, a producer, director, someone like that, or the name of the production company. It may even give you uh, a link to the website for the production company. If they give you that, go and check it out. So you'll be able to see what kind of work, what kind of quality work, what kind of, you know, what, what kind of work they've done already in the past. It also should say paid or unpaid. And it should, sometimes it'll say SAG or non-SAG or non-union. Those are always good things that you need to know. Uh, so those are, those are really the general things that'll be in the casting notice itself. Now, keep in mind before you go into the audition process, that just because you think that you might be the perfect person for that part, there's no guarantee that you're going to get it. Auditioning, uh, especially for larger films and, and TV productions is very competitive. So you may be one of 10, 100, even 1,000 or more people 
who are trying to get an audition for a particular role. Keep that in mind. Now first, once you, once you find out what role you want to audition for, there's preparation that you need to make before you even start. The first thing is to get what are called the sides. The sides are a portion of the script for the character that you're going to be portraying. In some cases, depending on the size of the film, the sides may be the whole thing that you're going to do, or it may be just a small piece. This gives the director, the casting director, an idea as to how you might interpret that particular role, how you look in that role. So you will get the sides. You may have to uh, go to a particular website or something like that. You might have to email the company and they email you back with the sides. Generally with something like Backstage or Actors Access, there is a link that you would go to to get a copy of the sides. And those are the sides for your particular character, John Smith. I would suggest, depending on how you're getting your sides, that you also try to get sides for other characters. Because your character is going to be interacting with some of the other characters. And when you get to the point that you're trying to analyze what, you know, how you want to be with this particular character, it might help you to know about how your character interacts with other people. Now, once you have your sides, the most important thing is that you should memorize the sides. Memorize your lines. If you want to memorize the lines of the other people as well, that's even better. Now, when you go to the actual audition, if this is a live audition, because there are two kinds, two kinds of auditions, live auditions and video auditions or self-submissions, as they're sometimes called. Uh, if you're going to a live audition, take those sides with you. However, there's always the possibility, if it's a live audition, that you may not have access to the sides beforehand you may not get the sides until you get to the location of the audition. That's something to keep in mind too. So don't panic <laughs> if they say the sides are not available and you'll get them at the audition. So memorize those sides. Now you will be allowed, and actually I encourage you to bring your copy of the sides into the audition room with you. Because if you're going through your performance and, oops, you forgot the next line. It's very amateurish for you to ask them, the casting director or the reader, what's my next line? It's much better if you have a copy of the sides in front of you, you can look down and find where your next line is and then keep it going. Now, something that just occurred to me that you might even want to do when you have the sides, make a copy of it and blow it up. In other words, have it in large print so that you can see it very easily and you don't have to look all over the place. Oh, where's my line? Where's my, where, where's, oh, there's his line. Okay, here's my, okay, here we go. And I mean, come on, who wants to see that? If you can just glance down and look back up at your character or whoever, that would be even better. Now, when you're doing a live audition, key, again, something to keep in mind, you, they will actually be making a video of your audition. So there'll be a camera person, there'll be a reader. Now, the reader is someone who is going to read the lines of the other person that you may be talking with in the scene or other persons. That reader is not necessarily a professional actor or even an actor. It may be the cameraman. It may be the casting director. It may be just somebody else who happens to be in the room. So then they're not really going to be acting. They're simply going to be reading the lines and it's your job to act. Now, as I said, there are two kinds of auditions, a live audition, which may be by appointment, or it may be an open casting. If it's by appointment, it means that you have set up a specific time that you're going to be reading for your part. If it's an open casting, it just means that, you know, they've said, these are the parts that are going to be available. Y'all come. First come, first serve. Okay, you get your sides. 
Before you start to memorize them, I would suggest that you read them over a number of times, and if you have the sides from other people, uh, try to find out where your character might either interact with others or simply be mentioned by others, because that may give you some keys to inter how to interpret your particular character. I would say begin with a, with a mini script analysis using the five W's, who, what, when, where, why. Who is this character? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Are they old? Are they young? Uh, is their name John? Is their name Susie? What's their name? What? What is the, what's the situation? What's the, what's the basic story here? Are you uh, on a desert island by yourself? Are you in the midst of Grand Central Station? Are you talking on the phone with your girlfriend or your ex-husband or something like that? Or your boss? Uh, who, what, when? What period of time is this? Is this a contemporary film? It is, is it something that took place in the 18th century? Or is it a science fiction film that takes place in the future? Who, what, when, where, where are you located? Where in the world, first of all, what country are you in? What city are you? Are you in a big city? Are you on a farm? Uh, are you out in the woods on a lonely night? Are you in a park jogging? You know, whatever that, that where is and why. Why are you there? Why are you interacting with this other person? What's, what's, what's going on? Uh, did you just get a call from your doctor telling you that you had some kind of rare disease? Uh, are you talking with your son or daughter, trying to convince them that they should go to college? You know, what, what are some of the whys? Why am I talking about this in the first place? And what are my motivations myself? What, what do I want to get out of this? So why, why am I in this situation? And how am I going to get out of it? And what do I want from this situation? So there are a number of different things that you need to think about yourself before you really start getting into the character. Because when you do your audition, whether it's live or whether it's a, a video yourself, you're acting then. You're not just reading the lines so that they can hear your voice. You are acting. You're acting the part of this particular person. And if you remember back to, I think it was the very, the very first video in this series, uh, I mentioned that an actor is like an illusionist, like a magician. You are trying to create the illusion that you are this particular person in this particular place, at this particular time, for this particular reason. And you want to be able to, excuse me, you want to be able to convey that to the casting director. Okay, so you've begun to work on your character and you've memorized your sides. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're going to the audition before you actually start it. One thing is that you want to dress to suggest. Now, if, for example, uh, you're auditioning for the part of a general, a four-star general. Don't go out and rent a costume and show up looking like a four-star general. Wear some nice clothes. Uh, I would suggest if you're doing a role like, like a, a four-star general, you might want to wear a, a sports shirt with a tie. Uh, you might even want to wear a suit, something like that, to suggest the role. But if you're like, for example, if the role, again, that you're auditioning for is a four-star general, don't show up in jeans and a t-shirt. You want the casting di director to get some kind of feel for how you would not only act as this particular person, but a little bit of a feel for how you might look as this person. So you want to groom yourself neatly or, again, whatever fits with the particular character that you're going to be portraying. Okay. So one of the things to keep in mind too is that your audition begins before you even leave your home. That's right. 
you need to remember that you may, for example, be in a small room with two or three people. So let's, let's keep a couple of things in mind here. First of all, do you smoke? If you smoke, remember there may be non-smokers who are in this little room with you. So if I were you, I would not smoke for several hours before your audition. Because when you smoke, whether you realize it or, or not, your body, your hair, your skin picks up the odor and it stays there. So if you're a smoker, take a shower, wash your hair, put on clean clothes, fresh clean clothes when you go to the audition. Another thing to keep in mind is, do you chew gum? If you chew gum, leave it home. Or if you want to chew it in the car before you get to the audition, that's fine. But don't be chewing gum during the audition. Or I would suggest even while you're waiting. One time years ago, I was casting uh, a role for uh, a, an actress or model to do a perfume commercial and was videotaping them. One of the girls came in and she was chewing gum and she had her sides and she was ready to do it. And I said, excuse me, but could you get rid of your gum? And she, oh, yeah. She didn't have any place to put it. So what did she do? She took it out of her mouth and she stuck it on a table. Come on. Do you want to hire someone like that? If you're a casting director? No. So what do you need to bring with you to the audition? Okay. Number one, the script, the sides that you have. Number two, I would say a pen because you're probably going to have to fill out some kind of forms. It may be a release. It may be as simple as uh, a list, you know, of people who are coming to the audition with a little bit of your basic information, but bring your own pen so that you don't end up in a situation where you have to go looking around for, to borrow a pen from somebody else. Another thing that you should bring or actually should not bring is props. If in the particular scene that you're doing, there's some kind of props like a, uh, maybe a, a clip, even a, a clipboard or a telephone, don't bring those. They don't need props. Their emphasis when they're watching you is on you. So this makes a perfectly fine phone and this makes a perfectly good clipboard. All right. Now also be prepared with a monologue. Now that's something that many people don't think of because it could be that the casting director, after listening to you do your particular part, says to you, okay, do you have a monologue that you could do for us? Now this may happen and it may not. If it does happen and you don't have one, what are you going to do besides looking pretty whatever? do have a monologue. Now, a monologue can be a section from a play, from one of your favorite TV programs or your favorite movies, not one that has dialogue in it because nobody else is going to read for you when you're doing your monologue. It should be something that you can do on your own. To be or not to be. That is the question. Okay, you've done your preparation. Now you're on your way to your audition. This is an important time. First of all, if you have an appointment for your audition, a particular time, let's say one o'clock in the afternoon, keep in mind a, a sort of rule of thumb. And that is, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. And if you're late, you're out. It's too late for you. 
if it's an open call and you don't know exactly when you're going to be called, I would recommend coming as early as you can in that call process. Because if you do that, the casting director is going to be fresh and alert. If you come toward the end of the day, they're going to be tired. They've seen so many people do this role over and over again. They're just bushed and they probably won't pay that much attention to you. So So come early in the day. When you go in the door, remember again, you don't know who's there. You don't know who you're going to meet. It may be, it probably will be other actors, but it may be someone who's related to or friends with the casting director. So be nice and courteous to everybody. There may be someone there to help you sign in. Be nice to them. And take your seat and wait patiently. Don't engage in a lot of animated conversation with the other people around you. Why? Well, they may be mentally getting ready for their audition. They may be still memorizing their parts of the script. Even if, uh, you know, the, the, the sides are right there and you need to pick them up, or especially if that's the case, other people haven't had a chance to read them over. They need time. They don't want to hear about the latest film that you were in or the problems that you had getting there. They don't want to hear about all those things. They're focusing on what they're trying to do. And here's a big no-no. If you're waiting, and it's taking a while to wait, if you happen to be a smoker, don't go out and take a smoking break. What's that going to do? Again, the smell is going to get all over your clothes and in your hair, and that defeats whatever cleaning up you did before you arrived at the scene of the audition. So wait patiently. and be courteous to everybody. Don't worry about not being, you know, looking standoffish or something like that. That's okay. People don't generally want to be bothered. You've been sitting patiently and now it's your turn. The summer of 1960 seemed innocent enough, but for Eddie it was a time of transition. Transition from elementary school to junior high, and transition from childhood to adolescence. Although he enjoyed watching the golden age of TV and playing with his best friend Doug, this young man would be faced with tragedy and loss. Under the Pig Nut Tree by Edward L. Schultz is a charming tale, simply told in a very readable style a poignant story of nostalgia. Under the Pig Nut Tree is available from Amazon.com. And while you're there, check out the sequel, Beyond the Pig Nut Tree.